guys, George Glinski here from Toe the Line, joined today by John Hick. John, how you doing, my man? I'm good, thanks, George. Yourself? Yeah, very well, mate. Now, John, a lot of people will know you as the, well, late notice king. You've come in on three fights, very, very late notice. Is that a preference of yours or is that just how you take it? Uh, I don't say it's a preference. It's just, well, my first one, I took it on, I think it was the first day. I got a phone call on the first day. And it's, it's funny, really, because more, more corner men, I, I rang him up. I said, can you come and call me down London on Saturday? He said, I'm in Vegas, mate. I was like, oh, all right. <laughs> so then I rang, I rang another one, just a, another one of my pals. He said he, he was busy as well. So then I got another one of my pals who he's never boxed before in his life. Um, he, like, he, he, he's got he's got a good boxing knowledge, Lord, but he's never boxed before. Yeah. So I said, will you come down? And I, I had a fight in the pub block three weeks before one boxing day it was. And I cut, I'd, I had a cut on my eye. And he was like, what about your eye? He said, you're mad taking this. I said, nah, I said, it'll be all right, it'll be all right. So I went down there with my, with my two pals, um, basically. And I got down there. Um, and like, it, it, they were more worried than me, to be honest. And as, as I was driving down there, I started getting the, the butterflies again in my legs. Because yeah. like, 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 in the glove box, you know, I've lost that a bit. I've, I've, I haven't had back butterflies since I was probably 18. Mm. And but as I was driving down, my legs were shaking. I thought, I'm, I just kept saying, I'm going to win tonight. I'm going to knock him out. And I got there and then, yeah. But I was only allowed the one cornerman as well. Only the one lad was allowed in the corner. Me over, mate, had to uh, buy a ticket. Jim, Jim, Jim was being tight, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, these were early days, BKB9, of course. They were, they were early days. The fastest knockout in BKB history. I remember we had a conversation the other day and you said to me that you weren't prepared for that fight, so you were very happy that it ended so quickly. Yeah, yeah, I was in for a tough night. I was, but, well, it was just after Christmas, weren't it? Mm. So I'd, I'd been on the pack quite a bit over the Christmas period. Um... I was a lot heavier than what I should be as well, I think. Uh, and yeah, if it didn't, if it if it went past that first round, I think I was in for a tough night. <laughs> what weight but, was it? What weight were you? What weight were you at? I think it was at twelve stone. Oh, I oh. I weren't twelve stone. I don't know what I was. I think I was about. I probably was. I was probably about eleven and a half. I think. Jeez. I'm not actually. I'm not actually sure. I can't remember. So as I say, you've come in on well three fights, short notice. And it seems like way out of your natural weight, yet you've won every single time. We'll, we'll just go through it. Obviously, Martin Thorne, the fastest knockout in BKB history. The second fight against Jamie Oldfield, an undefeated professional boxer from Liverpool that, again, we haven't seen the fight. We, we spoke about this earlier, but, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, it's we a cracker. Seen it. I don't know where it is. No, I have no clue. And then the third one. I wanna see, yeah, I want to see if, uh, if Jamie got that second round, what he was going on about. In oh, the- yes. <laughs> Actually, I'll get you to respond to that before we go on to Asi <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> What do you think of it? Did did you win the second round? Can you? Because there's no speculation because no one's really seen it. Yeah, no one's seen it. Listen, I'm I'm not sure, but if I hadn't won the second round, I think Claude Jamie said I think I was breezy dog just using the jab in the third round. I think if I didn't win the second round, I would have put a bit more effort in hmm. to that last round. So I'd, I'm not hundred percent sure, but I, I I thought I, I thought I must have won the first two if I was just trying to stay away in the last round and using my jab. But every, it's it's up to everyone's opinion, and it, that's what I reckon we should get it out there. I don't know where it is. I, as I say, no. I've that card. I think I said it was the third or fourth best fight on the best card of all time. So I would put it, you know, because all my mates at home had booked the fight as well, and all because Connor T was on that one as well. I think. Yeah, and I was the only fight that didn't get shown, and all my, all the lads were like, "Where are you? Where are you?" And I think I fought first. I think I was on first or second. And look, of the night. second, it was second because Mason second. Shaw came in first, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I was like, where? And they were all like, where's the fight? Where's the fight? And so, I don't know. Yeah, it was mental. As I say, it was one of those it fights. Was definitely, it was a good fight, though. Well, yeah, it was just one of those fights that sticks in my memory. And I, I don't know, but it was a weird one, that. But there was another bit of speculation, if you like, from Jamie Oldfield about a potential knockdown. Mm-hmm. In, in, in the Don't video, if I'm honest, it, your hand could have touched the ground. I'm not my sure hand, what you no, think. Do you know what? My hand did touch, my gra- touch the ground, but I've tripped over his leg, so mm. it's, um, you're clutching at straws if you think that's a knockdown. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
<laughs> it wasn't a shot then. You don't you don't believe it was. Nah, a yeah, but if you look, you can say he kind of like touches me on my back as I'm going down. Yeah. But it's not. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't claim that as a knockdown anyway, if I'm honest with you. Yeah, I, th- I think it was ruled a push or at least just nothing nothing was made of it. But yeah, I, I, I think I have to agree. I watched it and it did seem like you sort of collided with your hips and it was a bit of a twist. But no offence to Jamie, of course. I hope he... No offence Jamie. No, he's a, <laughs> Jamie's a top lad, right? You know what I mean? I just... I love the band, so it's got to be a... We need to watch that forward though, man. <laughs> I need to get it. We'll, we'll find a way and see if anyone... If there's, in fact, if anyone's watching this and they have a, a video of it from the crowd, that will do. We'll watch that. Just upload it somewhere. Send it to me. We need to see this fight. It was a cracking fight. But obviously after that, it was a great fight against Azzy Thomas, who arguably was the toughest opponent of all because we're talking about a Welsh national amateur champion and a very, very, very good MMA fighter with a fantastic record. How did you feel about winning that one? Obviously, that one was actually, I believe, 11 days notice, so a bit longer for you. Yeah, but it's, yeah, the longest camp, really. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, that that was a, it was a good fight, yeah. J- j- um, as he said, to, he, he said to think that I poked him in his hole when I knocked him down. Mm. Mm, but another clutching at straws, I think. So. <laughs> But look, look that, that was a good fight, do you know what I mean? And it, it, it was a tough lad, but um, I just felt, felt like I, I pulled it out of the bag a bit. I think the first round, the first round, well, it was a close round, and then after that, I think I'd come into my own a bit then. Uh, and yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, we've as I say, the last time we spoke, in fact, the only time we spoke on camera was after that fight. And it was, a, it was a really strange interview for me because I was very shocked to hear that at that time, well, not just that time, but throughout your whole career, you've never had sponsors. What, what's happened there? Nah, I'd, I've never had sponsors. Um, I, I don't really know, mate. I'm not really one of these. I'm not very active on social media or yeah. putting stuff everywhere. And I, I don't know. I've just never drawn any sponsors, really. I mean, I've had a couple of people um, asking to sponsor me before the... Uh, before the lockdown. So there's mm. Rob Blakely's uh, painting and decorating. That's one. There's Nana's gym. Mm. They said they were going to sponsor me as well, but I haven't heard anything since uh, since that. And there's a uh, Fat Theo comedy as well. But uh, obviously, I don't know whether these coronas hit them or, or mm. what. Do you know what I mean? So, but I'll, uh, I'll have to get in touch with them after 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 this interview and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Definitely. Has it always been like this, even in your gloved career? Was it like this? Yeah. Yeah, I've never had any sponsors. I've never, I've no, I don't even know how to go and get them. How do you, how do you go about getting them? <laughs> Mate, I'll sort it for you. <laughs> I, I can't believe it. I mean, I spoke to, I mean, Johnny Lawson is a, is another one who, I, I think he might have one, I think his gym, but it's his gym again. It's like you and Johnny Lawson, you sort of come in on these short notice fights and I feel like you're both extremely underrated in the game and I just, I feel like we need to put some respect on you lads' names. <laughs> What do you uh, think? Are you the most underrated fighter? Is, I mean, you're very humble, so it's not something you like to talk about, but are you? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I am. I am. I'm def- I've been chucked in the lines them three times, and I and I've come out roaring. That's the way I look at it. So people are going to have to start taking notes sooner or later. Definitely. And why do you think you're so successful in bare knuckle? Your style, or what do you think it is? I, do you know what? I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. I just really enjoy a scrap. I, I, I absolutely love it. The buzz that you get from bare knuckle is it's about nothing I've ever had in, in ever. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's it's unreal. I mean, I've took a lot of drugs in my time, and BKB is the best one by far. <laughs> by far. I agree. I've I've heard that line the other day. A crack of that. <laughs> 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 so we'll talk about your next opponent Craig Rocky Morgan obviously the British title on the line minimum weight 66 kilograms down to where you you belong as we say yeah. but how are you feeling about that fight what do you think of Craig uh, he looks like a good lad to be honest um, he sounds sounds like a nice bloke as well but yeah it's uh, it's, uh, it's on any it's been a good fight what did you make of his performance against Scott McHugh uh, we Pretty. I, I've, I haven't watched all of it to be honest. I've seen him put him down, which uh, is I thought I thought he boxed well against Scott to be honest. He, he, he did fought well, but I think I've got I've got the skills to beat him if I'm honest with you. And where are where are you weight wise now? Are you close to the limit? 
I'm 11 1 now. I was I started my diet on Monday. I was 11 4 and a half on Monday. I'm 11 1 now. So, well, I was 11 1 yesterday. Brilliant. It's coming down. I've got eight weeks anyway, you know. Yeah, and as I say, you started your camp the other day. Everything's good on the training front? Yeah, yeah. Everything. Well, I haven't actually been back in the gym yet. I'm back in the gym on Monday. Yeah. I've just been doing my runs and stuff and a few sprints and that. Just trying to get help with that weight loss. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I'll be back in the gym on Monday and we'll go from there. Back in work Monday. Perfect. So get back into routine. Good, good. Yeah, and we talk about your gym, specifically Fitness Factory. What's in the water down there? Because you've produced a lot of bare knuckle fighters. I mean, I have to give Simon Haycock a, a shout out here because he's produced, I think, six or it's you, Daniel Podmore, Chris Size, Ricky Nelder, Connor Tierney. So, yeah, what is in the water? I don't know, mate. It's just the atmosphere down there. It's just, it's great. And they're, they're, they're all good lads down there. Do you know what I mean? So, the, yeah, the, the, he's... he's his knowledge of, on the strength and conditioning side of things and, and stuff like that is second to none, mm. if I'm honest with you. Uh, there, there is Pard as well, who, who, who normally does more corner. Mm. Pard, he, he's a good friend of mine who we used to box with um, not in the amateur days. And he, he does my corners and stuff as well. So the, he normally does my pads and stuff, and so, so he normally does the strength and conditioning side of things. But uh, he's, he's a... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is down there. It's just it's so thought to be breeding the the talent from Birmingham at the minute, don't it? No, as I say, there's literally I believe one other fighter from Birmingham, Canelli, who isn't there. Obviously, Canelli's gym great for sparring. Canelli's well, got his own gym, yeah. Yeah, so I'll say Fitness Factory has become the sort of hub of Birmingham's bare knuckle boxing scene. What's the camaraderie like there? Is it a good atmosphere or? Yeah, it's great atmosphere down there. It's a really good atmosphere. Um, yeah, as I say, I haven't been down there for a while. Be good, raring to get back in there. Yeah, I can't wait. I'll be back down there next week. Obviously, your well, close friend Connor Tierney, a uh, a very interesting personality. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people say that this is a facade that Connor's making this up to build views and excitement, but I understand this is what he's always been like. Connor's been like this since he was ten years old when he couldn't box. <laughs> The kid is round. I don't know what's going on in his head, mate. He's he's just got a different planet, and <laughs> no, I can understand why people don't really like him. Do you know what I mean? But because I told him, I, I, he just asked me beats constantly. When when he was about ten, I'm sure he come in the gym once when he was about ten, and he was like, I've written, I've written a letter to her, Joe Cows. I go, what are you on about? Bear in mind, at this point, Connor's amateur record was he hadn't won many. <laughs> he, had a, he hadn't won many at this point. Do you know what I mean? He, he wasn't the boxer that he is now. Hmm. And he's, he's written this letter to Joe Calzaghe saying that he's going to be world champion. <laughs> 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 and my, me and the lads are in the gym ripping the piss out of him. Because <laughs> he, he, honestly, he, he was just one of them. He was one of them annoying kids, man. <laughs> <laughs> But, oh, I don't know, man. He's he's been like that. He's he's never changed. He, he, he's never views. This is kind of man. So it wasn't, <laughs> he's not a nat. Well, he is a natural boxer now, but he didn't start off as a as a great boxer altogether. I just do. Do you know what I think it is? I don't think he had the heart for it then. Hmm. And then he went back to it when he was eighteen, and he put his all in. It, it was it was more like a youth club for him, I think, when he was younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, I think he just come to come to old mate friends. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, he, he, he's a top lad, kind of. Uh, I love him to be so, do you know what I mean? And he's, but yeah, what, this is not a camaraderie, that is kind of thing. <laughs> mental, mental. Well, it's always nice to wrap <laughs> things up on, on Connor. But who have you got to thank for this fight? Is there anyone, you know, you've, you've mentioned a few sponsors there, but anyone, the coaches and friends and family? Yeah, there's Simon, Simon Aycock uh, down at Fitness Factory. There's Pard Upson, Paddy Upson, who does my corners. Um, my missus obviously, and the, and my son got to, got to put them in there and all. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, that's it, really. Obviously, there's a. I used to train at Northfield Amateur Boxing Club as well, and they they do bits. I go down there and do a few bits down there mm. with Norman and Jason and that, and yeah, they've helped me as well. 
Perfect. Well, John, it's been a pleasure. It's nice to get you finally on the interview and you did brilliantly. Thank you, mate. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Where are you?